So, let's continue the lecture three. The lecture three becomes now, okay, devoted to the weak topology, weak star topology. I believe, let's say, that I was using the, let's say, the terminology. Let me, let, let, let me maybe correct myself. Uh, I was writing X weak topology. But this is also, let's say, that's, that's my invention. Actually, the textbook is using this one, weak star topology. So we also denote this topology by E star E dual E. And we may also write now, this is omega star topology. So all this will be the same, let's say, different notation for the same, the topology on E star induced by the functionals that are functionals, let me put it like this, for x belonging to E, we have the G of j of x is equal to 5x from e star to r. So this is the topology which is induced by this functional. That means this is the smallest topology which makes all those functionals, all those functionals, put it clearly so we know exactly what we are talking about, continuous. All consumption continues. So, in what follow, we'll assume, we consider, a Banach space. E, and I want, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to mention it each time that this is a Banach space. Rather, I would like to uh, let's say, concentrate on the, on, on, on the formulation of the, of the statement. So let's start with the first corollary. I'm sorry, actually this is the second corollary. Call this one two because we had a corollary before. And we will formulate this corollary like this. So suppose, so let, and I put here like this, H, be a hyperplane this is a hyperplane in e star in e star that means what is h h is equal and let me say like this it is for some linear phi that goes goes from E star to R and alpha belonging to R. This will be the set of all F belonging to R mm, to E such that such that phi of F is equal to alpha. So that's a hyperplane. That's a hyperplane. So, so we, before we showed it, let's say if the if the if the if this functional is some some fun, uh, some linear function of phi from E star to R is continuous with respect to the weak star topology, then it must be one of those functionals that was mentioned here. That means of this type. That means there exists an x naught such that phi will be equal to this particular function. So here we have a different different statement. Actually, we will prove that the, the following. So 10, and we put it like this. H is closed with, OK, maybe not with, in 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 weak star topology and make it clear we are talking about the, this topology if and only if 
there exists an x naught belonging to E satisfying the property that phi of f is equal to exactly this phi x naught on f, which means this is f on x naught. If and only if. This is if and only. Proof. So notice that one of those implications is already, it's, it's like a trivial, so there is nothing to prove, because if you know that, for so look at carefully, if you know that, that this functional phi is of this type, then of course it is continuous with respect to the, to the weak star topology, and in this case, the continuity implies that h, so h will be equal and I, let me put it like this, phi x naught minus 1 of the value alpha, so alpha is a single point, so it's a closed set, so it's closed. So, basically that's the proof, that's the proof. So let's prove the other implications, and namely, so assume h is closed, in weak star topology and and to take f0 that does not belong to h does not belong. of course let me put it clearly here in this formulation is not equal to zero or constant yeah zero so take anyone that is not okay. so since 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 h um, complement of h is open and that's exactly in the weak star topology so in such a case there exists a basic set there exists a u i put it like this u which is a basic set, so this is associated with certain set F, finite set, and epsilon, and epsilon, so put it clearly, F is a set of X1, X2, Xn contained in E, epsilon is larger than zero, such that, such that, by openness that u is contained in the h complement. So what is this complement? So that's exactly this set in h complement. However, notice that u is a convex set. Convex set. And since it cannot, so, and, uh, sorry, no, maybe you should put it Okay, I just raised Convex, con, sorry. Convex set such that for every hmm, f belonging to u, we have here phi of f, cannot be equal to alpha because that's the that's exactly the h so if it's not good it's not a, and that now by the convexity follows that in such a case so so by convexity because con, in, in, in convex set you, you should understand convex set every point can be connected by the interval so we have either Again, for every f belonging to you, phi of f is smaller than alpha, or for every f belonging to you, phi of f is larger than alpha. So, so let us choose one of those. So let me write that one, that one. So let me choose this one. So we choose this one. Choose, choose this, this case. The other case, of course, it is this trivial to, to show that in both cases you will have a very similar situation, but that one 
is, let's say, choose it. So 10, put. So I take the set omega, which is equal, so this is also a neighborhood, but now I'm shifting this neighborhood and I take F0. So this is exactly the center, this is like a center of this, of this neighborhood, and I shift it. So that means it becomes a neighborhood of zero. So this is a weak neighborhood, so it is a weak star neighborhood of zero functional, zero functional in E star. So what happens if I take a G, so if you take a G belonging here, so this G will be F belonging to you, and this will be minus F0. So I'm getting, we get, that phi of G, which I can write it down, this is phi of F minus phi of F0, will be smaller, okay, we assume this is true, so we have here, this is alpha minus phi of f0, but observe that I can actually write down exactly what is w, so w is the set of all g belonging to E star such that for every for every okay F F remember what is F F set F so we have here this one oh that something not correct it should be like this this one we have this is the set F so I can just simply go down and I can write it down uh -huh. For k is equal 1 to n, I have here gxk smaller than epsilon. So that, that exactly, see this is my g, this is my g, where is the set? Uh -huh. that's, that's the set u. So the u, let me write it down, maybe use red, this is the set of all f such that for every k is equal 1 to n, I'm having here f minus f0 xk, smaller than epsilon, so this is my g, and also g, so, so I can rewrite it now. And, and one can easily observe, observe that n eh, is eh, not only is a convex, but also symmetric, symmetric set with respect to the origin, symmetric set, and that means W is equal to minus W. W is equal to minus W. And that implies the following, that, that the same inequality, that the same inequality, which is here, is also true for minus G. So I have here this inequality, so this inequality is also true, so let me write it down, for every g belong, belonging to w, I have here minus phi of g, which is equal to phi of minus g, is also smaller than alpha minus phi of f0, and this implies so, I'm getting that phi of g is smaller than, in absolute value, than minus phi of f0, and this is again for every g belonging to w. Hmm. And we have seen this one. We have seen this one. And that simply means that, in particular, We have here that the kernel of all this phi x k, and I can take intersection, k is equal to 1 to, that's to be, k is equal to 1 to n, 
that kernel is contained in this set W. So it means simply, as you notice, that this will be here. And since and since if G belongs to current, call this space L. I like it. If G belongs to this space L, then that implies also that phi of G is smaller than alpha minus phi of L0. And that means that the, the image, that the image, basically that, that the image, image, and I put here phi of L, is bounded. But image is a linear subspace. This is a linear subspace. This is a linear subspace. So we are getting that this linear subspace is bounded. There is only one bounded linear subspace, which is zero. So, so 5 of L must be equal to zero. So we get it. It must be equal to zero. And that implies which implies that G belongs to the kernel of phi. So let me point out what did we get? We get that we did get the kernel, that means we get the kernel k equals one to n kernel of this phi x k is contained in the kernel of Phi. And as we've seen, we have seen in the proof of the previous corollary, that actually implies, and therefore, phi must be equal to sum of certain. So, so put it like this: linear combination of this phi k. So this is k is equal to one to n c k phi of x k for some. Okay, and then you can rewrite it down, write it down, this will be phi of x naught, where x naught is equal, as we did it before, ck, x, k, k is equal to 1 to n, and this is the, the proof, this is the proof of this statement. So, so we have it done, and then now, okay, let's... Uh, make some preparation for the main theorem of today's class. I hope I will be able to include it. I don't want to take too long, but I notice that maybe it's sometimes better to go slowly, explain in details, rather than, rather than uh, try to, let's say, cover material in the required, the required time interval. I don't know, it's kind of a, kind of a let's say, intimidating for the teacher when we have to all, all the time watch the clocks. I'm not watching the clock, I'm just going to finish it and then sometimes maybe in the future all my, my lectures will be shorter, so we'll all have a break. So let me recall the product space, the concept, the concept of product space. So the product space is related to the following notion. So suppose I have a family of the topological spaces. Topological spaces, this is X alpha, this is the space, and the topology is alpha, so that means we have the set of, and it is family indexed by certain set of indices. So, so alpha belongs to lambda, suppose is a family of topological spaces. Then we define first the product set.
and this will be the product set that will denote like this. I will, for simplicity, write x, but this will be, denote like this. A product for alpha belongs to lambda of these spaces x alpha, and by the definition, it's going to be the set of all possible functions. This is set of all possible functions, and I will say like this, from lambda, Remember this, you should always remember about the sequences. Sequence, you can think like a, like a sequence, generalization of a sequence, lambda, and it goes to, and I say that this joint union of this, of this sets, of this sets here, alpha, satisfying the property that x of alpha is actually belonging to x alpha. So in certain way, if you write that now, uh, down an element, so, so, we can write elements in x in this product as simply like this x. You can simply think about this as x alpha. Alpha belongs to x, where this is the actual value. This is actual value of x alpha at the value of alpha, and that belongs to the x alpha. So this is the set, this is the set. So you can think about the sequences index, like a sequence is indexed by, lam by, by lambda. This is by lambda. By lambda. So in such a case, we have, we also have the projections. And I put it like this, for every alpha belonging to lambda, I have a projection P alpha that goes from X. So that's my product. I will write it again. This is X alpha and it is taking it to alpha. How it goes? Just simply take this element P alpha on X and it will associate X alpha here. So we can use the family of these projections, P alpha, alpha belongs to alpha, to generate the smallest topology that will make this, to generate the smallest topology on X, that makes makes p alpha all p alpha continuous and that reminds you that's exactly how the weak topology was constructed for weak topology we were taking functions now we are taking just projections this projections so that's again the topology induced by a family of a map so in this case, this topology will be, we know how to describe it, by the way. This will be like you take the inverse images of the open sets with respect to P alpha, take the finite intersections, and this will be the basis of this topology. So, so this, top, this topology, of course, will be having a name, so we'll call it this topology, this, this topology is called, so there are many names. So we'll put it like this, product topology. On the X, or another name is Tikhonov, Tikhonov topology. Tikhonov topology. So that is how it is. So. Let me formulate why I'm talking about the product spaces, because there is a kind of an important, important theorem, and this is called the Tikhonov's theorem. Tikhonov's theorem. And it says like this, let, assume, okay, maybe let x alpha t alpha 
alpha belongs to lambda, B, a family of compact topological spaces Then, the product space equipped with the product topology, I don't need to write it, and let me put it like this, pi, pi and this is alpha belongs to lambda, and I put here x alpha, mm -hmm, is a compact space. So this is the Tijonov's theorem, this famous Tijonov's theorem. So, so when you take the, when you take the, uh, let's say, basic course in topology, point uh, set topology, this is supposed to be part of the of the of the of, of the of the course. Even in the undergraduate level, we usually teach this theorem, we prove this theorem in the in the class. So I, I believe, let's say, if you haven't seen it, if you have uh, kind of a little gap, I advise you to, or refer you to kind of a good topology book and read carefully the definition of the product topology and then the proof of this particular theorem. So, so this would be basically our the main tool to prove the following theorem, which is the theorem which is called the Banahalogu theorem. That's the main theorem for this class. And this is Banach Alago. And let me formulate it correctly. So let E be a Banach space and denote by, I will just put here with a little star, B star because it is in the dual. So this is the unit ball. Oh, there's a closed unit ball in the dual space, so this is space of all E, E, mm -hmm. such that the norm of F is smaller or equal than 1. Then, B star is compact in weak star topology. And this would be sigma e star e. Very good. Proof. So let me first notice a couple of things. So, so I want to use the Tihonov's theorem, so I will find a way, so we will construct with will maybe 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 okay, I don't need to write let's say so maybe like this consider so maybe for any for any x belonging to E I need it I take I will I will say let's say I, I, I make a topological space consider so put x X, so this is like the, in the previous, X is capital X, is a topological space which is exactly R. So this is X is exactly R. And what is R? R is a topological space. This is just a set of real numbers with the usual topology. Usual topology. Since we have here all these particular, let's say, that means we have a family, then we have a family X, X, X belongs to R. So is a family, family of topological spaces this is E, 
this uh, tunnel of topological spaces, and so we can take the so we can take the product space. So we can take the product space. So we can take the product space, and I put in y is equal, and this one will be product x belongs to E, and this will be x. x, remember, each of these spaces is just R. So that's something like a product. So if I take here an element omega belonging to Y, I'm using the same notation as, as, as braces, I hope. So this omega will be written like omega x. Well, it means x belongs to E. So it will be indexed like that. Index. So I have this indexation. So now, of course, once I have that one, so I can define the end, and we can define an injection, actually a map. Put it like this, a map, and this map will be like this capital phi that goes from E star and it goes to this particular Y. And how it goes? So I will denote it like that, so this phi on any f will be exactly uh, something like a sequence x belongs to e, and it is easy to notice that omega x in such a case will be just simply evaluation on f on the x, so that's a real number. So this is a real number. That's a real number. So this is the way they find. So since, since you see, you take two different values of f, you immediately recognize that in this case, since you took the two different values of f, there will be x that will be giving you different values. We can see, we can see that 5 is injective, injective. That means don't has different values. So I have a couple of little statements, so first one, so put it like this, a, Phi is continuous with respect to the with respect to the weak star topology on on E star. Is continuous with respect to the weak star topology on E star. Indeed, we know how to verify the continuity. So, in this case, you just need to do the following. Indeed, put it like this. Indeed. If I take that one, so what do I say? I get here E star. I want to show that this map is continuous. So, this map will be continuous if, because that's exactly, again, this is the this is the family that induces, so I have here projections, Px, and it goes on R. So this is the family that induces the topology on Y. So this map will be continuous, if and only if this composition is continuous for every X. This composition is continuous. So let's say like this, what is the phi composed with Px is continuous. So must be continuous, must be continuous for every x belonging to B. But what it is, what it is, it is actually easy to notice that if you say Px composed with phi and I take any f, so I can see, I'm getting here, what do I get? I'm getting here that this is equal exactly f of x, and this will be like x belonging to e, so, mm, sorry, sorry, px of, and this is the sequence, omega x, put it like this, x belonging to e, so that one is equal omega x, which is exactly f of x, oh, so that means this is nothing else than phi of x, and this phi of x, <coughs> is continuous by the definition of the weak star topology, so we are getting continuity. So, okay, so I have two things, it's continuous and the 
one to one. So let me take the take. So put it like this. B take. Y naught will be exactly the image of this. So this is the image of E star. Since I have the image, then I can take the rigor ten. The inverse. And here we have the inverse, so this goes like this. I put it like that, so this is uh, y0. And that one is, this is y0, and this is my phi minus 1. Uh, I, should, I, should, I, should, I should say it. Then the inverse phi minus 1 from y0 to e star is also continuous. With respect to weak topology, weak star topology <coughs> on E star. Indeed, put it like this, indeed. <coughs> In this case, I just need to consider this map. I take again this map. This is my phi minus 1. <coughs> this is my E star, and then I need to take any functional. So, okay, let's take any functional. F, F belongs to the E, e star. Maybe, maybe, <coughs> yes, and this goes to R. So, let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. So, if I have here, so take an element omega. So, I know that this belongs to omega, belongs to to the image, so that means omega is equal phi, and let's say like this, g, phi of g. And in our case, let's write it down, this would be like this, omega x, x belonging to, 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 to e. So what happens here? Mm -hmm. So this guy goes here. Eh, 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 no, 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 this is... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. That's, 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 I, I made a mistake, so this is not this, it has to be phi x. This is x belongs to e. So this was incorrect, incorrect. Because this topology is defined by those maps, not by f, by those maps. Sorry, sorry. It th these things happen. So you can see that that guy, so if you go here, if you go here, so what do I get here? So this is my g here, so this omega, this goes here to g. And this G goes to, and I can, I can write it down clearly, and this is X. So that composition here, let's write it again. I have here phi minus 1 composed with the phi X on element omega. So I'm getting here that this one is equal G of X, but G of X is exactly omega x, so this one is equal omega x, so that means this is mm, so this is uh, p of x, p of x, p of x, so that means this is my p of x. Just need to look carefully, just need to look carefully. So in such a case, maybe I change it, because I just, maybe, the, okay, since, since this thing should be verified carefully, so let's do it carefully. Phi minus 1 of omega. Uh, so this will be of omega, this is equal omega x. So this is, so let's do it. So this one is equal phi of x, 
but omega is equal to omega x, omega x is equal to gx, so I'm getting here that that value is equal to g, and this one is equal to gx, and we are getting here that this one is equal to omega x, so this is equal to px on omega. Okay, I think I convinced, convinced myself on you. But, oh, that means it's good. It's good. So in such a case, let's revisit the let's revisit the the, 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 the the picture. Let's make a picture and revisit the situation that we have here again. And namely, what we have here, let's say, so we have the following situation. So I have here, this is my E star, this is my phi, this is my Y naught, this is contained in Y. So then I have here the set B star, so that goes to the set phi of B star. I call this set K, which is contained here, so this is my phi. And since phi is, is like a homeomorphism, this is a homeomorphism. On that set, we show that the inverse is also continuous, it's one to one. So we are having here that B star is compact in sigma in this topology. If and only if, this is if and only if, K is compact in Y. If K is compact in Y. Hmm. If and so we will concentrate and we'll prove that. So we will prove that K is compact. So let's start with the observation. It is easy, it is possible, it is possible, it is possible to describe, to identify, to describe the, in, the K in K in Y. Namely, notice that K must be equal to the set of all omega belonging to, that is, belonging to Y, such that, remember, omega is equal to omega X, such that several things are, uh, are, are, are satisfied. So, first of all, if you, have here, if you have here that one, that means this will be the value omega X, so if this belongs, so that means f must be for certain. Okay, mm, should be like that. So for certain f belonging to k, sorry to 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 b star, that means f is smaller than equal to one, and of course f is linear, as linear. So then you have here corresponding to this f value omega which is equal omega x so those omega x are basically the same as f of x so you can see immediately that absolute value of omega x must be smaller equal than norm of f and that one and that that one is norm of x but norm of x was equal norm of f is smaller than one so this is smaller equal than x so that's the restriction on the values in omega x and then, you, of course, you know that the, the, the value, the, that this one is linear, so that means in particular, you are having here that omega, if you take the x plus y, write it down, this will be the same as f x plus y, so this will be the same as f of x plus f of y, so you are getting this is omega x plus omega y, and then similarly, omega lambda x will be lambda omega x. So, 
In such a case, I can start listing. So first we have one condition. So the omega x must be smaller than x for all x is belonging to E. And the second condition is the linearity. And you have here omega x plus y must be equal to omega x plus sorry, plus here omega y and omega lambda x must be equal lambda omega x. So that's our set K. So in certain way, let me write it down, set K, I can rewrite it down as K1, intersection K2, K1, intersection K2, and, 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 and what do I see here? that this intersection, okay, K1, I put it clearly, so it will be given by the condition I, by the first condition. The first condition will give me the definition of I. So, of course, here for every X and Y in E and lambda belonging to R. So, this will be defined as follows. Uh, Namely, this is the set of all omega belonging to Y, such that omega is equal to omega X, X belongs to E, and here I have here that X, that omega X smaller than the norm of X for every X belonging to E. Huh. Interesting. So if you can see it, it clearly identifies. We can clearly identify this set. So this is clearly identified this set. So you see every omega, maybe explain it slowly. So, so, you, so if you have your omega belongs to the K1, there's if and only if for every X belonging to E. We have here like this, uh, omega x belongs to the interval minus norm of x, norm of x. So, this implies immediately that k1 is exactly the product, and this is product of interval, so this will be x belongs to e, and this will be minus x, and this will be plus x in the norm. And now you look here, this is a this is a closed interval, this is closed interval in R, so it's compact. And since the product of compact space, so this is a product, this is a product, product of compact spaces. So we have here the conclusion K1 is compact. So we have our conclusion. So, so let me go to the next page and let me point out since K is equal K1 intersection K2 and K1 is compact It is sufficient to show that K2, which I have to define, where did I define it? Oh, I didn't define the K2, that uh, K2, mm, which is given by, given by the condition 2, given by condition B. What is K2? Maybe I should I should now do it cor correctly. So K2 is the set of all omega belonging to Y, such that omega is equal to omega X, sequence X belongs to E, and then we have here like this, for every X and Y belonging to E, and we have here omega X plus Y equals to to omega x plus omega y, and the second one is omega, 
for every lambda belonging to R, omega lambda x is equal to lambda omega x. So this is the second set. So that the given is sufficient to show that K can given K okay, is closed. Is closed. So you see actually K K K K is the set K basically here is here. The the, the, the so you remember, let me return maybe to the previous one. So it was this one, I believe. No, that was that one. So you see, you have here K1. I did not define the K2. So yeah, I said that the set can be described. All. So this is my A, this is my B. So this set is given by the condition A, which is that one. And the second condition is giving you the set. So we can say, this will K2 is exactly for functions, for, for, for elements satisfying this condition here. So I go back and, and, and it's close. I need to show that this set is close. So, so I, I notice, okay, there are too many conditions. So I will say like this, for a given, so take X and Y belonging to E, maybe I don't need red. So I can define the set A, X, comma, Y. So this is the set of all omega belonging to Y, such that, so I write it down. So this will be like a P of X plus Y omega minus P X of omega minus P Y of omega is equal to zero. So notice this is the projection. So Px plus y of omega, it is equal omega x plus y. Exactly this, this element in this sequence. So notice that projections are continuous. And since you have here the, 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 the linear combinations of this, of this continuous projection. So that means in our case, this, this projection is a, this is a continuous, continuous with respect to the product topology map. So you can see that in certain way you can rewrite it down as, as the a x y means the inverse image of zero under that particular map. So we have here like this. So a x y a x y is equal. Let me denote this 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 map. I just simply call this map mm, mm, call it pi x and y. So this is pi x and y on omega is exactly equal px plus y on omega minus px of omega minus py omega so this will be equal my so this is this equal minus one of zero so it's closed closed so similarly similarly you can define the set b a b the, this set b and I put here lambda is a, is a parameter, like a, a scalar, this is x. So this will be the same, this belongs to y, such that this will be p of lambda x minus of mm, p of omega minus lambda p x of omega equals to zero. And that's exactly by the same argument, is also closed is closed, closed, by continuity of this particular map inside, because those are the projections, natural projections, which are naturally continued by the definition, by the definition of the product topology. So, since K2, mm, that's equal to the intersection for X belonging to for x belonging to the intersection for uh, x for maybe they like, maybe like this like this like this oh it's not it's not erasing so I have to write it down k two is equal intersection x belongs to E, lambda belongs to R, and this will be B lambda x, intersection, and this is x belongs to E, y belongs to E, and this is A 
x, right? That's exactly the set. And so those sets are closed. Those are the closed. So intersection, arbitrary intersection of closed sets is closed. So k2 is closed. So we are getting here that k is equal k1 intersection k2. So we are getting here, this one is compact. This one is closed. So this one is compact. So you are seeing that this is a compact set. Okay, okay, we achieved this. We finished the proof, so thank you. It was a little longer this time. We should have, we should take easier or next time. We should take easier next time. And maybe we should do some problems and make class shorter. Thank you very much.